We're here to talk to you about the Creative Identity Project that we ran at Project Air Strategy this year as part of my clinical placement for my Masters of Art Therapy. Fortunately, there is effective uh, therapy out there um, and that is really helpful in reducing symptoms of borderline personality disorder, helping people to regulate emotions, uh, reduce self-harm and suicidality. However, we also know that the quality of life doesn't always improve after therapy and people still find challenges with making life meaningful. Um, so I think we think it's important that there is a recovery journey also includes uh, finding that direction in life. There is actually no skills-based activity or therapy that addresses identity within uh, the larger framework. So if you think about DBT, there are those four domains and none of those domains are really that um, targeted around people's identity and sense of self, um, despite the fact that identity is a fundamental criteria for a BPD diagnosis. So there are lots of arguments from many researchers that say that identity and things like shame, anger and self-stigma need to be addressed more proactively throughout treatments. And so with this program, um, we, we aim to contribute to that. So um, we hope that by understanding more about ourselves, that can help us to understand what actually works for us and what doesn't. And it can be important when thinking about what a life worth living actually looks like. So when we developed the Creative Identity Program, one of the questions that we had was, what is life after DBT? So what, is th what do things look like when people have gained all those skills and they're, you know, supporting themselves, they're living well, they're addressing these immediate challenges of BPD, like Charlotte's mentioned, emotional regulation and things like that. So what happens after people are ready to take the next step? So how can we help people to thrive and to continue to grow um, after they've started practicing the skills-based strategies? One of the ways that we did this was to also look at what other therapies might be able to offer um, in addressing these challenges. Um, so one of the things that uh, inspired us was narrative therapy, because um, narrative therapy has this view of people's lives as a collection of experiences and stories. And the understanding that the way we think about ourselves um, has also influenced by how other people have influenced us and made us think about ourselves. Um, and so this kind of opens up the idea that we can reconsider the story that we tell about ourselves in light of what we've been told by other people and kind of make a choice about how we would like to have our story told. We know that studies from around the world actually show that people living with BPD thrive in art therapy um, and in that non-verbal form of expression and communication. We also know that researchers have found that people with lived experience report being able to make sense of themselves and find reflection and cohesion in art making. The idea of the artwork being a mirror for people um, and also the idea of it being a form of communication or a way to come into something or actually let someone else in. Um, and can help them connect, connect emotionally through imagery and creative processes. Uh, and we also know that it's actually quite helpful um, as a supporter to uh, more verbal therapy as well. Um, and also we find that mo a lot of people with BBD are actually quite inherently creative. Um, and that might go to some of the uh, strengths that we have around versatility and being adaptable as human beings. So in addition to these, uh, I guess, unique ingredients of this program, um, it was also set up as being co-facilitated by both a peer worker and a clinician um, to get, I guess, two perspectives in a room um, and um, include the, the power that peer support can have. One of the great things around peer support is that um, being someone with lived experience myself, there is an inherent trust that people have with me. The peer and the clinician need to work as, an, as a team, as a cohesive team and support each other and support the people in the room. 
So I think we've said enough and I think it would be good to uh, let the participants speak who have been part of this program. Um, they have um, uh, works that they want to show you and experience that they want to share. Um, so let's have a look. It was just the right thing at the right time. It's a very embodied task. It's a very doing task. And I'm a very much a doing learner. So going through that process of making something, I'm learning things along the way. When you're doing art, you use your art brain, you know, which is, you don't think. So it's actually just, it just comes out. And I really like that about art. reaffirmed the positive work I've been doing to try and shift my identity into a more fulfilled, well-rounded, multifaceted person. I think it's very helpful to have two totally different thought processes and um, ideas and concepts of how you could go about the artwork. I think going forward in my life in an idealistic world, that would be the best approach for me and working on my mental health. It's also really nice just to have someone with lived experience talking to you about this stuff. I was almost excited to be able to put down the things that are a part of my identity now and see how that's shifted from where they were. So like I had like the blue section that was all basically just my identity was just, I'm a patient. And then being able to connect to, okay, no, my identity has moved beyond that now. And what was actually cool with uh, that self one was to reflect on what I didn't put in it. That was cool as well, because uh, there were things that I actually, before doing that, would have thought were integral to, to my identity or whatever. And now looking at it, I'm like, wow, why wasn't that the thing that came up? tornado with the faces brought into it represents everything in the best way I can think of um, to kind of show that there's a lot of emotion and there's a lot of turmoil and a lot of destruction but there's also a lot of repairing in the background as well once the tornado has blown itself off and buggered off. covering up of the negative words was the one that really brought out the colour in me. And I was like, I'm going to make this one pretty and tasseled and light and airy. I really like the trunk aspect specifically because that was where I got to put down um, things that have helped me get to where I am right now. And then I think I really liked about this this one when we talked about the fruit, like 
it's nice thinking that all these elements, so the roots and the trunk and the branches and the leaves, that that all ties into what the fruit is that comes out. It was really helpful as a reflective tool to kind of see it all in one place, to be able to say, oh, look, my values do tie to my strengths and they do tie to my goals and they do tie to my coping mechanisms, but also as well, like, acknowledging that there's still some things in there that, I'm working on. With this idea of a rose, the symbol of love, and uh, just really what has been my path in life, growing out of my ability to use my brain and navigate everything, that was kind of how I saw my story of strength. I definitely felt like this program helped tie all the little bits and pieces together. Because I'm very visual and very art-minded anyway, I actually surprised myself when my brain was just like, how do we turn that into an artwork? And it gave me back that sort of power, I guess, of, well, this is me as an artist. Do it in a different way than just through talk therapy or self-reflection and actually have art around it because I find that when I have art around it is when I can actually take it in more and accept it more and fully realize it. Be open-minded that some things that come out of it might seem daunting and scary to them from a clinical perspective, but also that they shouldn't be dismissed. If art is how we decorate space, then music is how we decorate time. And so I think uh, that reflective artwork could be time informed as well if you wanted. So, acting, singing, dancing. Turn this into an image, use it to your advantage, create something and get it externalized. So, that was a snapshot of the program that we ran this year. We want to really thank the participants for their time, for their dedication to this and for everything that they have given to us um, over this last year, as well as today. Um, we're so honoured to be part of this process with you and to be able to share your work. Uh, this is actually the first research trial in Australia that looks at BPD using art therapy mechanisms and a project air strategy has been really progressive in allowing this to happen um, and taking me on as a master's student and allowing me to look at at this and write this program and it's really nice to hear from the participants experiences that they thought it was useful to work in this way um, to use those creative practices and thereby explore their sense of self and you heard some of the people that we worked with speak about the peer and clinician co-facilitation benefits. Um, so participants thought that this way of working was really unique and worked well. It's definitely something that I think we uh, need to progress more here in Australia. And that is a great uh, way of working with people with personality disorder. I also thought it was interesting how people thought about identity and what it actually means for them and that we can maybe have an idea of people maybe lacking an identity or maybe like uh, putting an emphasis on that incoherence. Um, but when we hear people speak, it's, uh, they are saying that they have this, these parts of themselves that are there, um, but that have not been able to come out so much. Um, and that through this program, they could maybe feel closer to who they really are and who they want to be. Um, so they could kind of like consolidate this sense of self that is there and move away from those negative perspectives of themselves um, to a point where maybe more neutral or more grays are allowed. Definitely looking at how we can expand on this experience, um, make it better, 
uh, make it more integrated into other um, therapeutic practices and into uh, practices of psychology as well. So thank you for um, taking the time to uh, look at our project um, and for hearing the amazing words and artwork of the people that we've worked with this year.